Here's a case study of solar twin panels going on Moss Farm Pool in Northwich, in Cheshire, in England. This photo shows the pool before they went on. It's a fairly complex thing to do, putting solar panels on a pool. You've really got to look carefully at the feasibility and what sort of specification you're going to do, because there are several pool he heating applications. The client needs reassurance. You need to make sure you do match what they're going to do, what they're going to want. Check that the feasibility is OK. Get the spec sorted out. In this case, it was changed. Um, by the client, and uh, here's a photo story that tells you some of it. If you look at the pool heating applications, there are four. Looking down on the left, every time you go for a swim, some water has to be thrown out because it gets partially contaminated by bodies. So you need to put new pool water in, and that comes in at about 10 degrees Celsius. There's also water for showers. That needs comes in about 10 degrees and is heated typically to about 60 and then cooled back down to shower temperature by blending it with cool water. Then there's the existing, the old pool water, which is, you know, in the high 20s, which needs to be topped up by a few degrees. And then there's space heating, actually heating the building itself. When you're doing the feasibility, it's worth thinking about the typical panel temperatures because low temperatures boost efficiency, so you want to have cool incoming water. You need to look at the seasonality of the demand for this heating as well, because you'll get most solar in the sun. So, for example, the space heating application is not matched. And you need to look at what sort of solar fractions. I've got a real rule of thumb here, but it's not very accurate. So let's have a look at some of these. With new pool water, it comes in about 10, goes out about 30 to 50, and the average will be about 25. It's needed all year round, and you might be able to get a third to half of it. It's a good evaluation, but the demand may be moderately low. The showers and domestic hot water, the water goes in to, for heating at 10, comes out at between 20 and 60, depending on um, what the sun can do, and the mean you need is about 25 as above. Demand is all year. Similar sort of solar fraction, um, and a fairly flat demand this time. For heating the existing pool water, it'll go in about 30, come out about 40, so the mean will be 35, which gives you a hotter panel temperature, which drops efficiency. It's all year, but it peaks in winter because it'll be cooler outside the pool, therefore the water will cool down quicker in the winter. So you'll get lower solar fractions. And the same thing goes with, um, with um, space heating. So showers and new pool water are the best uses for pool heating, if you can do it. But the issue with new pool water is it's not always a continuous heating thing. We ended up doing showers. There's the pool with the scaffolding up. The great thing was that the door was on the right and the working was on the left, and the only time anything was out of commission was for a few hours when we um, had to disconnect the showers. So there was no loss of income for the pool. The client was concerned that would it actually fit on the roof and in the plant room, because the plant room wasn't very big. Luckily it did. We had to do a seamless installation, which we managed, and we had to give them an upgrade path, so we put in um, connection, uh, potential connections for another seven panels if they wanted it. And they wanted PR, they wanted the visible roof. Moss Farm is in a valley, and the town overlooks it. The roof was suitable, highly visible area which faced south, and it was strong enough to take the panel fixings. Other feasibility issues included the pipe runs, which were achievable in terms of being long, uh, not being too long, and being able to get a waterproof entry around the side of the building. And the new calorifier, the new hot water store, which was going to preheat the water before it went into the showers, fitted in the plant room, and we could do it without shutting down the pool. Here we are, getting things up. We had five landscape panels on the on the roof, unistratus supports, and the pipes were ducted in 100mm um, containers, tubes. There they are, in the lovely British rain. Close up of the fixing. And we had to um, find exactly the right screws, so we eventually found what we needed for the job, a longer version of the ones that we were already on the roof. And there are the screws going into the I-beams on the other side of the roof. For the old ones, we had to match the penetration methods. Pipes going over the side of the roof. There are bundles in there, um, an umbilicus containing five pipes in each one, five hot on one side, five cold on the other, all insulated um, together. The hot's insulated together and the cold insulated together, of course. We wouldn't put hot against cold because you wouldn't get any heat delivery. 
The schematic shows the panels on the top left and a little um, mini header tank which um, supplies them and the pumps at the water level of the header tank. Down below that is a gigantic heat store and at the top of that are um, five red T's which are where the solar twin pumps pipes go in. Further to the right on the mezzanine is the large normal header tank which we which normally feeds the two calorifiers which are on the, the bottom right hand side but we intercepted that and um, to put water through a heat exchanger into, into the, in the heat store that we were heating. So that instead of the water going straight to the two shower calorifiers, we intercepted the water, put it through a heat exchanger, and then into the calorifiers. The water in our heat store, the one on the left at the bottom, um, stayed there, stays there from now until eternity, just circulating up and down towards the panels and heating up as the days get warm. So this was a preheat system. It preheated the water that, goes, that uh, went into the showers. Here's a picture of the plant room before completion. The blue blob, vertical blob on the left hand side is the new calorifier, the preheat calorifier, and the two thick pipes going in at the bottom right and top right of it are the intercepts of the cold feed. The header tanks above, the T's are on the left, and the heat exchanger is in the middle of the top two thirds of the calorifier or heat store. Nice open plan, simple pool. The roof was a nice um, low pitch, which made it safe to work on, but it did optimise the summer performance and not the winter. I'd prefer a steeper roof if I had the choice. The roof construction was a walk-on construction. It was nice and strong, and it was easy to attach to the I-beams that you can see running long ways down the pool. There are the pipes going over the edge of the roof and through the wall. There's the little mini makeup tank and the pumps in the background, the black blobs. There it is again. It was a very successful project, and we're hoping that at some point the funds will become available to do the extra panels. Thanks from Barry Johnson and Solar Twin.